time for us to start? Yes. All right. I'm Smita Mishra, and I'm your speaker for this track. I also work with a company called QA Zone Ecosystems, which is a software testing firm. I have done software testing for all my life, which started uh, my work life, which started in 2001. If there's anything specific that you would like to know about my work experience, please feel free. And um, other than that, I would like to quickly understand from you what's your expectation, or maybe if anyone did put their sticker there that they have this goal from this session. Did anyone? Okay. Any specific goal that you have from your this session? Then yeah, this is what I was wanting to know. Maybe I can touch on that. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's more about the goal, really. Yes. 
value driven. <coughs> and so yes, um, see, agile technically means uh, flexible. It means um, free thinking, it means the ability to actually adapt to whatever change is coming. Yes, that is what Agile is. But when you come to your testing, do you think the same? Does Agile actually mean to you in your testing free thinking, adaptive? Yeah, maybe. We'll, we'll come to that. What's the, what's the typical testing? Before Agile, has anyone started working in a world where Agile was not there. Most of us, right, when Agile was not there, we were waterfall, we were traditional testing, con uh, conventional testing. What, what was it like? What, what did we do in our conventional testing? Sorry? When everything is delivered, coding is done, and then there's a final phase, and you now come out of so the code is given to you, handed over to you, like like a president is handing over the award. Yeah. Now you start. Your now you can. Yes. So that's where your goal is. Sorry. Document driven testing. Document driven testing. Yes. You had your set of requirements also in the form of documents. Your testing was also in form of documents. Test cases. And Test documents. cases. Yeah. A lot of them. Yes. We had traceability metrics, so every yeah. requirement had a test case. Yeah. Based on the requirement. <coughs> How many of us uh, believe in usage of traceability metrics still? It's good that you Okay. okay. You know, I have this feeling that if XP never made traceability metrics in their QTP and QCs and this stuff, we would never hear this term. <coughs> I, I, I believe it because I am not able to see a purpose of it. I have 10 requirements, I have 20 test cases. I do not understand what it tells me. 1 to 20, 20 to 1. Yes, it's covered. But what kind of coverage? But uh, khana purti, there is a word called khana purti for formality. Is that what we are doing? That to me, traceability metrics doesn't really give any value other than yes, maybe somewhere I have to put a checkbox. It is done. We yeah, covered that requirement. Basically, it comes to be used for the postmortem stage when the yeah, client comes. Why yeah, a lot of us we do a lot of our activities. You know, very good point. What's your name? Sorry. Rishi, very, it's a brilliant, brilliant point here. A lot of our activities in IT is actually an overhead and driven by the fear. What will we do after we get caught into this? Saving our backs. Each one of us wants to actually save our back. So a lot of our overhead actually comes from there. That's I don't totally agree with that. Okay, yes. So, uh, we have used accessibility metrics uh, very well because some when the tester blocks a defect. Yes. Okay. And it, it basically uh, goes back to that requirement. Okay. Yes. Then the developer and the tester sit together and yes. see whether what the requirement is there, what the defect is uh, posted, and then matching that requirement, then they try to fix it. That okay, this was the requirement. Either the requirement has Let's say you did not have the requirement yeah. traceability metrics. Let's say you did not have traceability metrics. Okay. But what we do is. Whenever a defect is mapped, so it is not that requirement is having a test case. Okay, what we do is the test case should be mapped to a requirement. Okay, and this is what I testing because this was required. Yeah, so I, the other I, way around we, you, you, I you, 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 you. really get your point. I now. Think that you can't, uh, without requirement, yeah. how do you know what to do? <laughs> okay, that, that's okay. There's another point. Without requirement, how do we know what to test? Okay. You have to know acceptance criteria is fair, but without requirement, how do you test? Acceptance criteria is uh, something important, but do we really need to have all the requirements before testing? Uh, that we will come and touch upon that topic. Yeah. Now, typically, if I remember, this was what we used to see: phase-wise approach. We did analysis, we did coding, design, and then finally testing, where we actually came up with a te testing was a phase, right? Then we also came up with this, the beautiful V model. All of us have used it. If any one of us, uh, Manoj is in, pre if, if you must have even sold it to your management teams, this is good, this is really brilliant. Some of us would have done pre-sales, anyone involved, they would have sent this as our methodology and sold testing to the clients. Brilliant. You're still using it, awesome. Uh, I, I forgot your name, sorry. Sridhar, yeah. So Sridhar is still using it. But uh, are you still using it as a con conventional model? You use yeah, it in I'm agile. Yeah, in the medical device industry for, uh, for regulatory perspective. Wow. Very important. 
Yeah. Then you are into that IQ, OQ, PQ mode, right? Okay. Okay. Then that's a whole different game. But still, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that part. Of it. So this is what I say that this is the typical characteristics of a traditional testing. This is what we used to do. We know our roles here. We were given, um, and maybe I'll listen from you what it is, but it was a phase. We had to pass it as a gate. Oh, testing is there. Then we pass it. And then uh, if something goes and fails in the customer's end, tester is held responsible, right? How did he do, uh, how, how did he miss it? That's his responsibility. So tester, the test team had the complete ownership for quality. Then we had a um, development team sitting here, tester team sitting there. Please do not talk to each other, watertight compartments. Yeah? Do not, do not mingle because what you'll do is you'll get influenced by what developer is saying and you might not log the right defects. You are not trusting your own tester. You are saying your tester is poor enough to get influenced by someone else and not do his job. Yeah? He might, but well, that will be a good thing, right? Because tester does the right thing. If he gets a good, good come out. But if he, if he does the, if testers are able to influence developers, that will be a brilliant world. Now, after all our testing is done, and one is that the feedback is really late. You went through all the entire cycle. That's when you were able to tell whether your product was good or not. Yeah? That feedback loop is really huge. But even after you've actually found your defect, like we spoke about when, when something fails, then you have to do the postmortem. But a lot of times, right before that, our discussions are not about, uh, uh, are more about, is this defect good enough to stop or delay the release? That's major discussion with the management is not about anything else. But you know, this is, uh, OK, some small defects they pass on, developers fix it, all of that. But critical defects. Uh, and there are some uh, huge face-offs. That's where we say, is it really? I mean, major discussions are around this. Should we stop the release? Should we delay the release? What uh, testing is all discussing about that? And test <coughs> last is there. Yes, everybody. Testing is the last team which actually gets the handover, and it's the last team to perform. And uh, but here is a different question, right? Now testing is starting, so there also there is a problem. Now testing is not delivering. Okay, what is agile to you? So we spoke about flexibility, we spoke about adaptiveness, we spoke about uh, free We spoke about Fine, let's let's not. Yeah, okay, fine. So compressing the schedule, yes? This is what Agile is about. It's about no documentation. No. No planning. It's about coding up to the end, like okay, keep doing it, keep delivering, keep doing it, but, but keep coding to the end. No testers needed. Anyone who believes this? Yeah? Yes. We don't need testers. We don't need testers? Good. Uh, okay. Anyone else? Yeah, it speaks cross functional team, so everybody should be doing everything. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's a way of thinking, which is a good way of thinking. But we still need testers. I would say no. Test. Agile is not about trying to. Uh, it, it may have uh, come up for these reasons. A couple of them could be partially right or wrong, but no. It, Agile is not about compressing the schedule. It is not about the, uh, removing the testers and uh, making developers the testers. It's, it's really not about all of this stuff. What is Agile then? Why did we get into this? Why did we say, I mean, people believe that Agile means there's absolutely no documentation. We don't have to write anything. You know, it's, it's, it's so free. Of, uh, it's only about testing and coding. There's no documentation. But that's not what it is. So what is Agile about? It's just an umbrella term which was coined to put the extreme programming and scrums together originally. Um, it has its roots in, it, in the iterative development. So we started from there. That's, what, that's how Agile came into this world. But currently, what we are talking about is Agile is I'm so sorry, guys. Agile is about uh, having frequent deliveries, maybe smaller uh, release cycles. Um, it's more about 
what we said adaptive, adapting to the needs, changing needs of business. Why? Because originally we always had that document driven testing. You had a set of BRD, I don't know what all you called it in our organizations, it was called BRD, FSD, SD, FD, whatever documents. All these documents, we will sign off the test plan. We will not write test plan until and unless it is signed off by the business team. Yeah? This is what we used to, we used to put our foot down. That's not acceptable anymore. That we don't have time, we don't have flexibility to go for it. Yeah? So that's where Agile came into more and we're saying that we will be uh, adapting to that Agile practice. These are the typical uh, Agile uh, modes you will see, test driven development, acceptance test driven development. Anyone who has worked in these areas who can tell me what test driven development means to them? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Any? Yeah, so you first write your test cases, then you code accordingly. Then when you see the gaps, you fix them. So what it actually means is, like in this situation, that if the testers have not put in the test cases, you cannot code. I would say then it's under form of uh, waterfall, which has gone reverse and has gone wrong. Yeah, because it's like requirements nahi we could not test, now tests are not there, we cannot code. Ideally it should not be, you should be agile, you should be flexible enough to do it. And we can talk about how, how we are uh, doing that. Acceptance test driven, anyone? What is the difference between test and acceptance test? Also right, criteria. Criteria. So the business tells us, the people who are actually going to do the acceptance, then we discuss it with them. There are 20 different stuff which are there. We, we bring them down to say, okay, these are the few acceptance, and then we kind of go to the same cycle of development and demonstration. Demonstration is a part of uh, ATVD, which is important. You can add anywhere. And I know you're an expert on this. Um, what it means is you develop something, you actually show it as a prototype, and then you move forward. So every time you're going ahead with a prototype model. And then there is this exploratory. If anyone was attending the earlier session of Mark Lines, he was mentioning this is under methodology, exploratory, where people are wanting to build it, break it, show it to the people. If it's not working, let's, let's scrap it, let's build something. Let's, let's actually focus on what people really want and explore. So that's another way of doing it. Here um, in TDD, ATDD, we, I heard that we had this test and acceptance criteria as basis. What is the basis for exploratory? But how do we go for exploratory testing or, or agile? Black box. Black box testing? Random. Random. Okay. Yeah. Anyone here? You are trying to discover the scenarios where you can create the software, yeah. you can create the product. Very nice. I would call it techniques, the scenarios to break the product, yes. A lot of techniques you will apply, but it is not random. That word random, ad hoc, please remove it from the dictionary. Exploratory is not random. It's a very, very, very intelligent and I would say to some extent planned, to some extent uh, documented form of uh, testing and development. You do develop and uh, you do uh, write your test cases and execute it at the same time, but that's because you are using that quick feedback method. You're saying, okay, this one passed, that means there's no issue here, but let me now try to fail this. So you write separate test cases. And uh, just to, I'll take one minute here to ex uh, make you think of exploratory uh, as a security testing. What do we do in security testing? Do we write five test cases and when they pass, we say that, yeah, it's secure? Do we do that? No, we actually try to hack it. You try to hack it. And, yeah? And record, record whatever we are Yes. Doing. Hack it through what? It passed this way, but I am not satisfied, right? I know it will break. I know it will not break this way. But there is some way. It may not be the username and login passwords. Maybe not. It may be some SQL injection. Maybe not. It may be some XML, some uh, cross-site scripting. I don't know how it may fail. But I know it will fail. There is some loophole here. What are we doing? We are hunting that bug. We are saying, kahi to chupai. Like we are like a lion and deer thing. We are trying to hunt that bug down. Do we do that in our testing? We don't. We write our test cases, test script scenarios, they pass, we're done. Good, our product looks good. Let's think of testing 
as more as security testing, that will give you an explanation of how exploratory works for you. That's how it will work. You have written 10 test cases or test scripts looking at your product. If it fails, what do you do? You don't stop there and say that, okay, uh, sorry, you don't, if it passes, you don't stop there. If it fails, you don't stop there. You investigate. So one is bug hunting. But when you get it, you investigate it also at your end. We'll, we'll come to that part if it's... Yes, please. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. There's called something as charters. So, yeah, charters. What we do is actually, instead of writing those huge set of, having a whole requirements document and writing test cases end to end for those stuff, what we do is we break down our requirements or our pro project application into smaller parts into those areas, we put our focus there. We say, I'm going to do performance testing on this module of this application, right? Now that is my charter. I'm going to break that part. If I'm going to do security, I'm going to mention this methodology, this area of the application, this is how I'm going to do it. And once it passes or fails, I'm not going to just leave it there. I'm going to explore it further. I'm going to say, okay, if it passes, then that means that uh, I have not done enough testing, maybe. I, I put that onus on myself to do some more hunting. If it fails, I say, okay, let me see, it failed here, but is the same behavior shown by this function in other pages also? So that when I report, I say, I do not just put a screenshot of my page and say, you know what, it failed here, done this. This test case failed, this defect number log, this is the screenshot, done. This is not how we do exploratory. What we do is, we go back and try to explore the areas surrounding it, related areas, and we say, okay, does it fail there? Yes, it does. So let me add that to my discussion, so that when I report my defect, yeah. Sir, okay. uh, just a follow-up question on uh, yes. this, and that please confirm that is this a correct statement? Yes. Okay. When we when we are doing normal testing, we what we do is we write our test cases and we execute them correct. and we know we that. But in exploratory testing, we perform our testing first. We discover that something is broken, and then we document it. And that's basically what we do about your test case. Uh, you could say it like that, but some amount of planning can still be done. Oh, of course. So when, very yeah, like, I'm going to target this module, I'm going to target the security, or yes. I'm going to target these yes. attacks or something, yes. but that's pretty much it. But, but when case. you are targeting, exploratory uh, are of different levels, but let's say you are doing it. You already know the product, because all of this will depend upon how much you know the product, how much you can explore, how much is already explored, uh, what technology, how, can, uh, how um, comfortable you are using those technologies, all of that. So yes, I would say you do write test cases simultaneously. The moment it passes, fails. I did this, it passed. I did this, it failed. You do these things, and you do simultaneous. Yes, that's exploration. Uh, just to, uh, what is the best practice? Like, if I'm saying that I have like 20 days, then uh, when do you think you know exploration testing comes in the future? Like, it's a regular deal after two weeks, and I'm already testing yeah. the stages that I have to. First of all, um, okay, there are two ways of looking at it. One is if you are doing a lot of script-based testing, I would say it will be very difficult for you to completely jump off it and break it. If you can, very nice, go explore it completely. Exploratory does not mean that you will not script it or you will not document the details. You will do all of it. It will be a little different way, it will be leaner way, there will be no overhead documentation. But, and it could be simultaneous. So it's not like you've written some test cases two years back and you're still running them. It won't work there. You have to write it re almost real time, but a uh, little bit, I would say, some planning is done and then your execution, during your execution, your test cases get completed, which does not happen in traditional testing. You pass 100 test cases, you're done there. You're not going back and changing those test cases because you could not find a defect there. In exploratory, you'll go back and say, okay, I, I passed these 100 test cases, right? So I don't need to do that anymore. Uh, or maybe I'll do that as part of the equation, but I'll change my test cases more so that I can find functional defects. So that kind of practice, it depends on how much time you have, if you can implement. And there is nothing as best practice for anything, frankly speaking. There's only good practice in a certain context as this. What's your context? If in this it fits, it's a good practice there. If it doesn't fit, it's not a good practice for you. So whether the world says it's best practice, doesn't make any sense to you because in your context it doesn't fit. I'm doing exploratory testing and I raise a defect, you know, it, it, and 
and then of course my product owner will tell, tell me, okay, I'll charge it later and all that. So, you know, the bugs that we found during exploratory testing, at what time do we prioritize the inventory? I think prioritization will really be dependent on how critical that defect is to your product. Let's say you wrote all your good test cases, none of them could find a critical defect, but you were doing exploratory and you really hit upon that one thing that you needed. So it's, I mean, do you want to fail to the next sprint? It's your choice. And then a practical scenario becomes where they go yeah. uh, that, you know, which user story it was, uh, you know, why, you know. See, a defect is a defect. Whether you find it through exploratory, you find it through, in your sleep, you find it while eating, a defect is a defect. How you want to treat it? Yeah. It's on the third thing, then you are asking that when to prioritize it. So it is very simple in Scrum. In Scrum, when do you prioritize the thing? So it's been planning meeting, right? And that's when it is planning meeting. Okay. So when do you prioritize it? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
we have a set timeline, we have a set number of uh, people, we have a set budget, we have to work on that. What is the best business value you can offer your, uh, your customer? That is what our focus as a tester should be. Are we the one who say this release should go, this release should not go? No, we are not. What is our role in the entire system? Support the management to see the defects, to see where they can fail. Like the headlights of a car, the headlights will not put on the brake. You decide. You want to fall into that ditch, it's your call. Because it's your car, it's your life. Right? But the headlights will tell you there is a ditch, there is that cliff. You still want to jump off it, your choice. Test team will not say that, you know what, I own this product, I will stop the release. You cannot. Business owns it. Business has spent the money there. If they want to go with 20 features on me out of 100, their call really, honestly, it's their choice what they want to do with it. What you can do is show them the right picture. And in time, well before in time. If you're telling them the same thing after all the decisions are taken, after the risks have been higher, I mean, already faced, then it's of no use. Can you show the risks and the gaps well in advance? Yes. Then you're a good tester. That's what we're talking about, uh, expectation from testing. Don't be an overhead, be a trusted partner. How do you do that? You've got to understand some business. So whether it is agile or traditional, you need to understand that. So first thing as a mindset of a tester, whether you come from traditional or agile, you have to understand what you are testing. You cannot just write some test cases based on requirement and say, yeah, I, I'm done here. You have to understand how your business functions, how your product functions, how do they make revenues out of it, what is your way of earning money, what is critical there, which is the most customer facing part of it, which could be failing most. You have to understand your business, most importantly, study the comp competition. If, you com if your organization is coming up with a product uh, application, go and see the competing product in the market. See what is it that is it doing, and that, that it may be doing better and you could actually add that to your product. Yeah? Studying the competition is one of the best ways to actually improve your testing. Now let's see the characteristics of a agile testing. It, it is planned. Whatever we, we do, and we all agree, right? Somebody called it sprint zero. There are different ways of calling it. A lot of it is planned, and we do, uh, it, it may not be as exhaustive as the traditional one because in that we, will, we used to have a phase all dedicated to it. Here we are doing everything together. Testing is not last, it's integrated. Your test teams are integrated. You're doing it in parallel. You're collaborating. These are, this is how your agile scenario looks like. When you are into an agile system, you're not away from your dev team. You're part of it. You may have to run unit testing. A lot of us, we say, you know what, unit testing is developer's job. Maybe not because a sprint can only be as fast as its slowest component, right? If you take a lot of time in testing or dev is taking a lot of time in coding, your sprint is bound to take a lot of time. What can you do? You can actually support each other. Can you write unit test cases for your dev team? Can you actually sit and execute it for them? Please do. If you're competent enough, please do. Can they pitch in once their development is end? Can they pitch in to do your testing? Yes. They can. They have time, right? Then do it. So here, earlier in conventional testing, only testers tested. In agile testing, everybody is testing. Your manager may also have to sit and test. And actually, it's a good practice to do that kind of defect bash. You know what a bash is? Birthday bash? Anybody heard? Birthday bash? What do we do in birthday bash? Cut cake is so birthday celebration. What is birthday bash? Anyone who stayed in hostels? Huh? Birthday bumps, yeah? Yes. So you raise the birthday boy or girl and you actually give them good bumps from uh, gravity, opposite to gravity, right? Yeah? So that's birthday bash. You do the same with your product. All of you hold the product, bash it, kick it. And when you say all, it's the entire team. That's defect bash. Find the defects out of it. And that's what you do in agile testing. You do not depend on one person once the or Yes, it, the test team is still needed because there are a lot of uh, experienced stuff or skill yeah, as a tester. You cannot overlook them. You just cannot say, you know what, all kind of testing will be done by our developer. We cannot say that. But can developer, developer pitch in? Yes, they should. Can tester pitch in? Yes, they should. Um, it's not a phase, so it's continuous testing, small feedback. More automation. Anyone here who agrees? 
that as a tester, agile tester, I will have to go into more automation. Yeah? Anyone who disagrees? Why more automation? Have we started to do more regression because it is agile? Because of continuous delivery, you have continuous to do it. Continuous delivery, you have to do it, right? You don't have all that luxury of time, ki, aram se, we, can, we cannot do that. So what we need to do is automate as much as possible for the regression support, yes? And then for even for uh, situations where you need to report and you're not sure if you'll be given that priority, automation can help. Automating unit testing, excellent work in Agile. Do it because you are going to need it many times. As a tester, it's a strong suggestion. Yeah, go ahead. So quality, you have to get into that mindset in Agile. Quality is a team responsibility, not a testing team responsibility. So the minute you say testers don't do this, you have created a silo. You're Sign. you're still in that iterative waterfall or water waterfall. You are. It's not Agile. Yeah. You have to think of quality as one team effort, as part of building quality. It's all layers, all types of automation, including manual, exploratory, and yes. everything. So the team uh, has to be. Yeah. I, mean, uh, I agree with this statement that quality is the thing. Because there are challenges to the practical implementation of it. Okay. If I just reverse it, okay. then development is the entire team's responsibility. Tester should in, start development also. You know, in, 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 yeah. Actually, if you can, then you should. That's the point. How how valuable you can be to your team. That is the objective. See, my point is when developer is delivering something. Okay, yes. Is he accountable for that code? And how does he become accountable by at least doing the mandatory? If we are suggesting that you know tester should come and do it, I have two concerns here. A, you know, uh, delivery fee chaliya, test raga, test so let me just get it done and you have to okay. deal with it. A. B, testers have to do the other levels of testing. If the developer is not competent enough to do, when you talk about exploratory testing, when you talk about integration testing, when you talk about module testing. Now the personal tester, if unit testing also, he will say I don't have time for exploratory testing and the other uh, Yeah, you know, uh, your point is, uh, okay, you are, you're, you're, uh, Maybe your concern is valid, yeah. Because you, what you're saying is that everybody's got their basic job, right? They got to first do that. To a certain extent, yes. But the point here being discussed is the basic reason. Because we were doing this in traditional testing also, right? Traditional uh, IT developer was developing, tester was testing, right? Where did we fail? The the point was that we were not able to, as a tester, we started to wait and depend on the development team to give us everything, and then we test. It. So we had to integrate. Uh, so, <coughs> from the agile testing standpoint, right? So uh, one thing I think has been going is that uh, it's a joint ownership. Uh, so if agile can say that the quality is not ownership of the developer or the tester, that's not the team is not one. What is there are two way of handling this? One is that if you're doing a TDD, as somebody said over there, then it takes here that we like test for training and then you go over here. If you don't have that as a package, right? There are two others who are doing it. You like you do pair programming, you can do pair testers. The, the person who is coding on the local after the thing is done. Pair tester and Very good. do that. Very good. And uh, so if you are uh, doing automation for your regression pack, which will be overnight, uh, somebody mentioned CNCD over here, uh, you will have a huge backlog if you have a dedicated team which runs in parallel and build up onto it. So other philosophy that has come in and is that uh, some of the testers also do instant automation by the build of the component which is pluggable to the uh, the parallel regression. So these are a couple of ways you have to uh, yes, find so out. You, you don't have to do every ideal situation would be everyone does everything. But we understand that's not the really the skill that is required to understand a particular function code and how the function works mm -hmm. and let us say MS test or some unit test or some uh, framework that you're using. But then it develops the the testing team goes to understand those functions of methods. See, then try to do the coding to do that. That's, that's, yeah. But I suppose that better yeah, approach that we have found is uh, uh, testing team gives the requirements and the data set and the development team to the yeah. uh, unit test coding that's of that part. That's a part of the way to look at it. But I would su mm -hmm. still suggest let's not again come to the same mode that you know what, uh, developers do this, testers do this, program manager does that. No, nothing. You have to start thinking as a team and think that this team has a goal, be goal driven, we have to achieve it. Who can contribute what? 
I really that's that's where we are saying that as a tester, start focusing a little bit more on the programming level so that you can be of more value to your agile team. Can you do everything? Maybe not. But can you do some part of it? Yes. So put yourself, plug in yourself wherever you can. Everybody will definitely not be able to do everything. That's understood. There are specialized skills needed at some point. But then uh, as a test team, as a as a overall agile team, your goal is one. The quality ownership is one, so you need to understand who can do what. Wherever you can plug in, pair programming and pair testing is one way. Please uh, follow that more. Yes, that that helps. I'll move quickly. Um, as for lightweight documentation, lightweight documentation, yes, 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 yes. <coughs> Is short of time, yeah. so but I'll quickly uh, maybe can I speak to you? If anybody else does not want to speak about I'll do this, I'll quickly cover the slides and come back to like okay. uh, This is uh, this list has not been created by me. It's been compiled by James Bob, who's the I would say in my language is the god of testing. He's my teacher, so uh, he compiled it. He says that a tester doesn't matter from which methodology, he should have these skills. He should be able to question. He should have keen observation. He should be able to under, see what uh, observe means not just seeing, but actually grasping what he's seeing and understanding. It's not only it's not a, like we say it's not about what you are hearing. It's about what you are actually you know, I mean, grasping from it. So critical thinking, critique the product. Try to think of the wrong ways, the risks, the how you can actually break it, how it is not good enough, the, whether it is user experience, performance, security, any any part of it, or the functional. Yeah? Lateral thinking, creative ways of actually breaking the application. Yeah? Quick learning, a tester has to be a quick learner, whether it is from technology perspective, programming perspective, from uh, functional perspective, application perspective, a, uh, user's uh, experience perspective, a tester has to be a very quick learner. So these are the skills. Communication, very important. When we start debating with the developer team, in traditional testing, maybe it worked, worked because the kind of uh, uh, kind of scenario was different. In agile world, it's not going to work. Bug hunting and bug investigation we covered. Yeah. Thank you. Now, um, what we can do as a tester is prioritize because at each one of us have short time, small cycles. Prioritize your question. Prioritize your. Uh, um, you say, what, what are your high priorities with respect to functions, with respect to risks, with respect to questions, put them together. The only point here that I would like to actually highlight, T-shaped competency across businesses in depth testing. That's T-shaped. Can we make it pie-shaped? Yes. Across businesses, in depth testing, in depth tools and technologies. You've got to learn the programming stuff. Yeah. I'm really running short of time. so. Communicate, uh, yeah. Only two things that I would add to become from, from James Box stuff. I just added two more stuff that is automation, which discussed interpersonal skills. Please focus on it, right? Um, your strength lies in planning. Plan to learn the business in advance. Don't wait for the project to start so that you are able to. Uh, contribute so that, so that you don't depend on the requirements document. You are able to learn the competition and actually create your testing. Give your testers some space to nurture and grow so that they become agile testers, so that they are able to, they're comfortable questioning. If you don't let your team question, you won't be able to uh, build agile testing. Change your perspective. Um, you have one heart, you know how difficult it is to exchange one heart. Your business has, your team has many. Your business has million hearts. Please think from your business perspective. They've got million hearts to exchange. How can you actually accommodate all of them in your product? Right? Thank you so much.